Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to apologize first for my lack of videos. It's uh, been a long struggle with the blue-green algae, and I just wanted to wait until I had something substantial to follow up my last video with. So, what's been going on with this tank lately? Um, I guess you could say a lot. I wouldn't wish cyanobacteria on any planted tank hobbyists. This has been one of the biggest tests of patience and perseverance I have ever endured. I can't tell you how many times I thought about tearing this tank down and starting it over again. Now I have had some good progress, but I think it's too soon to say I'm in the clear, but so far I can tell you what I've been doing to deal with it over the past couple months. Since my last video, I've been hypothesizing what might have caused this in the first place. I mean, unless you understand why something is happening in your system, it makes dealing with it very difficult. Most of us already know what causes cyanobacteria in the first place, so I'm not going to go into too much detail with that, I'll just be banging off some of the points as I go along here. If you saw my first video on cyanobacteria, I mentioned that I was going to switch to EI dosing as opposed to PPS Pro, as one of the most common causes of this is low nitrogen. I experimented with my doses, leaning on the upper limit of the acceptable range, while performing more spot treatments with hydrogen peroxide and doing plenty of water changes, but still no luck. A few weeks after that, I reduced my lighting. Still nothing. In fact, it appeared to be getting worse. More on that later. I continued to keep up with as much water changes as I had time for, and trimmed heavily when it needed to be. The lawn was starting to look rough. I had patches uprooting and some stuff not growing back as dense as before. I cut out some of the larger patches that were lifting up and broke them down into smaller plugs so I could replant them and hopefully they would grow back, which they did. My next thought was that maybe my filter needed some serious cleaning, so I got a couple bins of tank water and was surprised what came out of it. This was getting really frustrating. I struggled to believe that there was a lack of flow causing this, as I have an extremely powerful filter. For my tank size, it's, I think, rated 490 gallons per hour. If you factor in the rocks and substrate on a 50 gallon tank, that's exactly where it needs to be at. But I added a couple power heads anyways. Even though I hate the way they look in tanks, especially since I went through all this trouble to make a clean and presentable aquascape. At the same time I added the power head, I did two back-to-back -back doses of the erythromycin, removing as much as I could before treatment. All it did was leave me with the bulletproof strain, which is what I worried about in the first place. After exchanging a few emails back and forth with an ADA rep, he suggested I try vacuuming the plants. This clip was after a few weeks of doing this, so it's not that bad, but I was pulling up some serious crap that I didn't think to film. I also had a bit of a mishap as you can see here. I uprooted a patch of baby tears and started sucking up my powder type cap layer. Whoops. Okay, so at this point I thought I had it beat, but there's still no change. Um, my last resort was dosing chemically. For this treatment, it's said to add an air stone. I figured if I was running an air stone and I have CO2 running, it would would be pointless, so I turned the CO2 off and opted for lights out during this treatment. Again, I removed as much as I could manually before, and then did a large water change and rinsed out my filter. Then I had a eureka moment. I thought maybe I had my lights suspended too high, and also thought that because they were too high, there would be a degradation of quality of spectrum, similar to using old bulbs. After speaking with some experts on the Planted Tank Center Facebook group, I realized that that theory was wrong, since spectrum doesn't shift in the air, it shifts in water. But increasing the intensity was causing the plants to pearl rapidly, and the plants were able to take up nutrients faster. Maybe this is why the cyano seemed to do better when I reduced my lighting. Now, having addressed most of what could have caused it and dealing with it accordingly, by process of elimination, I was able to decide that the cyanobacteria was something that took hold during the dry start phase of this aquascape. I've heard many problems people have had with the dry start method, and this is one of them.
Having said all that, I think I'm going to do one more dose of the ChemiClean. But this time I'll leave the air stone out and keep the lights and CO2 on. There is a lack of information regarding using ChemiClean in a high-tech planted tank, so I'm kind of taking a risk on this one and taking one for the team. But I don't think the manufacturers considered people using this in a planted tank where the plants can produce oxygen instead of an air stone. So it's something worth trying out. Anyways, I just want to thank you guys for watching, and I apologize for tricking most of you with my plant pronunciation guides. Sorry. I was bored.